Tigers on to a rehabilitation period that continues long past the next typhoon hits the next province. It's a good year when we stay inside the alphabet of typhoon names. Super Typhoon Haiyan slammed into central Philippines on November 8, 2013 with storm surges reaching 24 feet. It was classified by the United Nations as a level three emergency with over 40 million affected, 6,500 officially reported dead and an uncounted number still missing. It was, at that time, the strongest recorded typhoon to make landfall anywhere in the world. Those are the facts. Here are the other facts. In the hours after Haiyan, after the survivors climbed down trees and staggered down rooftops, there were bodies in backyards, leaning on refrigerators, inside houses jammed behind closets, in bathrooms and bed bedrooms and on the edges of the airport road, wrapped in rainbow bright bed sheets. There were places where container trucks floated in the water with their drivers still clutching steering wheels and where it is normal, for example, to be asked for directions to the nearest pile of cadavers by a boy looking for his brother. I'll tell you a story about a man named Ramil Navarro. He was a handsome man, just past 40, his skin darkened by the sun, his hair a curling mop over his head, an old gang tattoo tracks over his right arm, a fresh car over his left. He wore rubber boots and a tattered pair of green shorts, the same pair he was wearing for 17 days after the storm. He was tough and he was tall. And it was the toughness and that tallness that nearly killed him after the storm, when he became an anchor for the drowning. Ramil was one of the few who was strong enough to fight the water. So people clung to him, children, teenagers, a mother holding a daughter all of them clinging to his hair and hanging on to his back while snakes slithered down his neck. So Ramil pushed them away, abandoned them all in the flood so he could swim away to find his wife and daughter. He caught his wife just before she went under. But it was long after the water receded that Ramil found his little girl. He found her under a tree in the wild grass her 11-year-old arms wrapped around the rock. So I asked him if the families of the children and women he left in the water were angry, if they blamed him for abandoning them in the water. He said, no, of course not. There's no one left to blame him. Most of them are dead too. <laughs> 